consensus view, Dr. Gokarn, that seems to be emerging is that about $25 billion of the $85 billion CAD will be dependent on volatile flows. Could we continue to get those kind of flows? Yes, I think uh, for a long time we've been working on this uh, notion that anything below 3% of uh, GDP as a current account deficit uh, was reasonably uh, safe in the sense that you would always get enough capital to finance it. Now, we didn't really put that to test till uh, two years ago. Uh, between 91 and 2011, uh, we didn't see the CAD actually ever going beyond 3% of GDP. Uh, but in the last two years, we've obviously seen it go above 4 and obviously that hypothesis, that perception has uh, essentially been proven uh, to be quite valid, whether it's 3% or 3.2%, you can quibble over the, the decimal points. But I think what is clearly suggesting is that when the CAD rises beyond a certain threshold, uh, you are facing enormous vulnerability, and uh, this tends to feed upon itself, because as investors see this as a source of currency risk, uh, they, they become even more wary about putting money in. So I think addressing the fundamental cause of this, this uh, instability uh, is very important. We can do a lot of other things, as we've seen over the last couple of days, uh, the RBI taking certain actions, SEBI taking certain actions, basically trying to restrict uh, speculative investment in the currency markets. All, all very good, all very important, but really are complementary to uh, actions that uh, will address the fundamental problem. I don't think you can expect them to be substitutes or to make up for uh, lack of action on the fundamental issues.